Hey guys, welcome to the new shop. Today we are addressing the first order of business and that is building a miter station. We're gonna be building it back here on this wall, but we've got kind of a fun twist with this build. So the platform that the miter saw is gonna sit on is probably something you've never seen before. We're gonna introduce that now in this video and we hope you enjoy it. Using three quarter inch sandy ply plywood, First, we're going to cut the strips for the top of the cabinets and the kickers for underneath the cabinets. We use our track saw to break down the full sheet of plywood and then cut the strips on the table saw. The only problem with not using the track saw on the floor is that Johnny has a little trouble reaching across the plywood. This is our first time using sandy ply and our good buddy AJ over at AJ Built This did a great video about various plywood types. His video is linked in the description to check out after this video. We decided to cut our strips at four inches because basically we do what we want. With our strips cut, we then have to put the miter saw up on the assembly table because we don't have miter station which is why we're making this video, because we need a miter station. It's science. We start cutting the strips for the kicker to length and, oh yeah, dust collection. Oh, the joys of starting over in a new shop. Needless to say, we should have plenty of shop content forthcoming. Next, we cut all the panels for our two cabinets. The cabinets will be 36 inches wide, 36 inches tall, and 24 inches deep. First, we make the narrow cuts and then finish with the 36 inch cuts. And there's a strategic reason for doing this. When we go to cut the top strips to length, we want the fence to start exactly at the width of the cabinet bottoms, which are 36 inches. We'll show you what we mean in just a moment. After we finish all the panels, we can cut our top strips. Here is a quick tip to make sure you get those top strips of your cabinet at the perfect measurement. Let's say for instance, this is our bottom piece. For us, it's 36 inches, and then we've got our two side walls. So our top strips are not going to be 36 inches. They're going to be 36 inches minus the width of our side walls. So if you grab a couple pieces of scrap like I've got here, stack them together and put them up against your fence. Another anchor piece here and anchor that down. Remove your scrap wall pieces and move your fence up to that anchor. Remove this. And now you are set up to get the perfect cut for your top straps to keep your cabinet square. With the fence set, we bust out the old table saw sled and get the top strips cut to length. Our Harvey table saw allows us to slide the fence back so we don't run into any hairy kickback scenarios when making these cuts. Next, we need to drill some pocket holes in the strips. In moving here, we upgraded our pocket hole jig to the Craig 720, and this thing is sweet. Now, we're ready to start assembling the cabinets. Using these 90 degree clamps makes assembling cabinets so much easier. We have the woodpecker ones, but we'll link them as well as some more budget-friendly options in the description. Either way, we highly recommend getting some version of these clamps for assembling cabinets, especially if you're working by yourself. I feel like I can't be alone in this, and let us know in the comments if I'm not the only one that has to say kill shot every time you turn the drill sideways. Kill shot. All right, 
right, so now we got our cabinet sidewalls attached to the bottom. It's just flipped upside down right now to make it easier to put in our top strips that are gonna connect the tops of the sidewalls together. And then later, we'll actually use this to attach the top of the cabinet all together. Now we've already got our pocket holes drilled, and we're gonna throw some clamps on the outside of this to give a nice tight connection so it doesn't wander when we actually sink our pocket screws into the pocket holes. We're just going to be using these screws that were included with the Craig 720 kit. Now we've got the first cabinet carcass built. We can move on to the second one. Hey look! Two cabinets! Now we can put together the kickers for the cabinets to sit on. It's a lot easier to position and level the kickers and place the cabinets on top of them than trying to position and level two whole cabinets with the kickers built in. Hopefully to alleviate confusion, this is what we're aiming for. All right, so now that you see what it's supposed to look like, we'll show you how we get there. So first we attach this one inch square channel underneath. It's got 5 16 inch holes pre-drilled in it, and we secured it using 5 16 inch bolts. And we haven't attached the tops down to the miter station yet because we still need to mark out all the spots for the rest of the hardware. The other hardware needed for this project is 3 8 inch threaded rods, locking nuts, ceiling plates, three quarter inch screws, and Loctite. The cabinet tops will overhang the cabinets to make this whole system work. We're marking out the underside of the cabinet top to install the ceiling hangers. We determine this based on the space requirements for our particular saw. The ceiling hangers attach to the one inch square angle by the threaded rods. The saw will be suspended by sitting on the top of the one inch square angle. It may seem confusing now, but it's all gonna make sense shortly. Once the ceiling hangers are secured, we'll insert the threaded rods. The threaded rods we purchased came in 24 inch lengths, so we'll need to cut them down using our cutoff wheel. Remember to always take precautions not to start a fire when doing this. And if you like slow motion sparks, make sure to subscribe. So a concern we encountered when building this, um, I didn't anticipate, but we're gonna show you how to fix it and avoid it altogether. So these ceiling plates are going to allow this threaded rod to come down and pull the saw upward. These aren't designed to be a super tight fit. They're designed to suspend things from the ceiling, right? And so you're gonna have this wobble. Well, you can't have that in the middle of a cut with your miter station. So if you put a lock nut, on it you can cinch that down and i'll just do it hand tight to demonstrate boom it's solid it's not going to wiggle around in there like this one will so that's tragedy avoided all right so now we got all of our uh, nuts set on the 3 8 inch threaded rod in place so we're just going to throw a little loctite on there some thread locker doesn't have to be loctite just add it to the threads because we don't want this moving around later I am not an engineer. I don't know if this is necessary, but it makes me feel better. It gives me a nice warm and fuzzy feeling in my heart. So I'm throwing it on there because you definitely don't want these walking out. Uh, that's going to affect the plane of your saw and basically ruin your life. With the ceiling hangers and threaded rod now affixed to the underside of the miter station, we added a couple additional nuts that will sit on top of the one inch angle. And the pre-drilled holes on here is 5 16 of an inch. We are going to bore it out to 3 8 to fit those threaded rods. With our system all assembled, we can put our saw in place and really start to see this thing coming together. All right, now we got it roughly where we want it to go. And so we're going to bolt it down. Then we can make our adjustments after that. Finish the miter station cabinets, we decided to go with this oil-based stain in ebony. 
So now we've got our cabinet carcasses stained ebony, looking sharp, and now we're gonna turn our focus to the top. So we're going to cut two pieces, one for each carcass out of three quarter inch MDF. So let's get going. All right, so we've got our MDF cut for the top of our cabinet, and now we're gonna focus on laying out where we want to get our T-Track put in. So I'm using three pieces right here. I got this one off Amazon, and I thought the color was really cool. I'll leave a link down in the description if you like that one as well. But we're gonna use it as a straight edge up against our saw fence, and then I just have two more pieces here. So there's the straight edge. This piece is just representing the gap I want between this line, the fence, and the T-Track, because I actually want the T-Track set back behind where the material is gonna go. So now we know this is where we want it. We're gonna draw a line here on the back side, and instead of using a, a router to cut a groove in this top, we're actually just gonna cut, and the MDF top will be actually in two pieces. So you'll have a piece, then the T-Track, and then another piece in front. We'll show you what that looks like. So we got the one cut and it's not going to be a perfectly square line cut from one end to the other. That's why we didn't throw it on the table saw because what this is doing is actually kind of scribing itself to the wall. So now that we got that first one cut, we can show where this T-Track is going to attach to the base. And the fact that there's a little bit of a gap here should be about 3 eighths of an inch. Uh, it's not going to be that big of a deal because we just use a little bit longer uh, T-bolts to run in the track. So now we have this back piece perfectly scribed to the wall as well as this end perfectly parallel to the fence of the miter saw itself. Okay so now that we know where it needs to go we can go ahead and just secure the T-track down in place and then remove the top and and finish it. Okay now you can kind of see what we're talking about with making a T-track sandwich out of the two pieces of MDF. We're gonna attach them from the underside, but first we'll take these off and apply some finish to make them a little more durable. With the shellac all dried, we attach the MDF tops and flush trim them to the cabinets. So now that Johnny has finished flush trimming the top of our miter station, we are gonna go ahead and get started cutting the mortises on our cabinet doors. We're gonna be using a Euro style hinge jig by Miles Craft. So let's go ahead and get started. I could wait no longer and dialed in the height of the saw. This is the best part of the system. You can dial in your saw precisely how you want it in relation to the cabinet tops. All right, now that we got the doors on the cabinet, we're gonna cut some trim just to finish it off. And we're going to use our miter station that we now have in the shop for the first time. We attach the trim using glue and 23 gauge pin nails to tie it off. For the sake of over explaining, I really just wanted to detail out the way this system is put together. So up here you have the ceiling plate that's attached to the underside of the cabinet top. The threaded rod comes out of, goes through the one inch square angle, and then you've got one, two, three nuts on each one of them. So this thing is rock solid. It is not going anywhere, which was actually kind of a little bit of a concern of mine, but thankfully those locking nuts really resolved that concern. 
Another amazing feature about this is let's say we wanted to replace the saw with something else, different brand, different whatever. They may not all be exactly the same size. That's not a big deal because you can dial it in so accurately at the four points that this thing hangs from that no matter what saw you throw on here, it's going to fit. All right, this project is now complete and we have a miter station in the shop. And functionally, we love everything about this miter station. However, aesthetically, not so much. It's ugly. The stain that we picked is really not what we envisioned. So chances are in our future videos, this might be a different shade, but everything else will stay the same. Make sure to get subscribed and we'll see you in the next one.